the shiny new Snapdragon surfaces are here, but not everyone wants to pay that extra dollar amount for a bigger SSD, let alone be limited to only 512 gigabytes. And today we're going to cover how to upgrade a basic spec surface to one terabyte, you can go even higher, and this will cover a Surface Pro 8, 9, 10, and 11. So when changing out the primary storage device in a Windows computer, you have to decide how you want to get Windows onto that new drive, since unlike with macOS, when you boot it into recovery and it lets you download a fresh copy of macOS from the internet, Windows doesn't quite have that yet. Which presents us with a few options. The first being to create a Windows recovery USB using the image provided by Microsoft, which you can load onto a 16 gig drive, pop the brand new SSD into the surface, boot off that USB drive, and then you'll get a fresh install of Windows. Which is great if you want a fresh install of Windows, but if you want to retain all of your programs and settings and all that, then you're going to have to start from scratch and that can be a real downside for a lot of people. The second option, which I'll be using in this video, is to create a full and complete image of the surface itself right from the surface and then store that image on an external hard drive or network drive, which we can then restore from later. Creating a drive image isn't just great for backing up everything exactly as you like it, but when we restore from it, everything will be exactly as we had it before. All your settings, all your programs, all your license keys and all that will be exactly as we left it. So after the restore process, we shouldn't have to touch a single thing. I'll be using this option since it's the most convenient for me and because the Surface Pro 8 that I'm going to be doing this process on is an Intel-based Surface and so I can run my preferred image tool, my Creum Reflect, right from the Surface. Uh, but on an ARM Surface, it isn't able to run quite correctly on the ARM chipset yet. Which brings us to option number three for you ARM-powered Surface folks, which is very similar to option number two, uh, except that instead of taking the image directly from the surface, you're going to pop the SSD out first, put it in a little M.2 enclosure from Amazon, I think they cost like 20 bucks, pop it into a different computer, uh, probably a Windows 1 running Intel, and once that's done, we'll just write it back to the new SSD using that same enclosure on that computer. If that sounds complicated at all, don't worry about it. Once you see the McCream Reflect interface, you'll see that it's just a few button clicks and we'll be good to go. So if you're going down pathway one, where you're just going to create a fresh install of Windows using the Surface Recovery image that they provide, you can use the video chapters below to skip ahead to the swapping out the SSDs portion of the video, as essentially all you need to do is pop out your old SD, put in the new one, and then create that flash drive using the link in the description, boot into that USB using the power and volume down keys when you boot up the surface, and then Windows will guide you from there. If that boot process sounds complicated, keep watching because we do a very similar process for booting from the McCream Reflect USB drive. For those of us on pathway number two or three, let's get that image created of the SSD. Before we image the SSD, we're going to want to disable BitLocker or any drive encryption. That way we don't hit any snags during the duplication process. And you can find those settings on Windows 11 through the settings app, privacy and security, and then device encryption. And this took about 10 minutes for it to turn off for me. As for imaging the drive, like I said, I prefer McCream Reflect. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but we'll give it a shot. And they used to have a fully free version. Now I believe they switched to a try before you buy model. However, I believe their trial is 30 days, which should be enough to tackle this project anyway. However, I think I grabbed my install of McCream through the Chocolatey Package Manager for Windows, which might be using an older non-trial version. So feel free to grab your version of choice there. So I'm here on my Surface with McCream open. If you're on pathway number three, you're gonna wanna hop ahead using the video chapters to the swapping out the SSDs portion of the video to get your original SSD out of the surface, pop it in your M2 enclosure, and then plug it into your non-ARM Windows PC, and then hop back to this portion of the video. But for us on pathway two and three here, we're going to make sure our primary SSD is selected along with all of its partitions, and we're going to click image this disk. After that, we'll decide where we'll store the backup image and where it asks about setting up a backup schedule. We'll just accept the default since at the end, we'll decline saving the backup schedule anyway. And then on that same screen, we'll check run this backup now and let it do its thing. Once that's done, if you're on pathway number three and using the external enclosure, feel free to hop forward to restoring the image chapter in the video. And from there, you'll just be re-imaging your SSD. But if you're on pathway two and created the SSD image right from your surface, this is where you'll want to insert a spare flash drive into your surface and then then in McCream Reflect, go to other tasks and then create rescue media. You should see your USB as an option. So you'll select it and choose build, which will add a version of Windows PE to your flash drive, along with a very slim version of McCream Reflect, as well as your wireless drivers and your saved wireless network. So that when you boot it from the drive, you'll actually hop on your Wi-Fi straight away. So you can restore from an image on a network drive if you choose to. Once that bootable USB drive is created, it's time to swap out the SSDs. So first we're going to shut down the surface and then we're gonna need a SIM card removal tool to pop off the cover plate located here under the kickstand, which we'll do by pressing straight down in the exposed pinhole. Then we'll need a T3 Torx screwdriver to remove the one screw holding the original M.2 SSD in, and then to remove the old SSD, we just need to slightly lift the SSD up at an angle, 
and then wiggle it from side to side while gently pulling it toward ourselves and away from the slot. Quick pause, if you're one of our friends on pathway number three and using an M.2 enclosure to clone your SSD, feel free to skip forward to the restoring the image portion to re-image your new SSD inside that enclosure, and then hop back here to finish installing the new SSD into the surface. Once removed, we'll insert our new M.2 drive face up with the keyed pins matched up, slide it in all the way, and then we'll just hold it down gently while we put the T3 screw back in to hold it in place. Finally, we'll pop the metal cover back on, which should snap into place like so. Now it's finally time to clone our original SSD onto our new SSD by restoring the image we made earlier. And again, if you're following option number three, you'll be following these steps from Macrium on your non-ARM Windows PC with your new M.2 SSD placed in your USB enclosure. For those following option number two, we're now gonna boot our Surface into our Macrium Recovery USB we created earlier. So when the Surface is off, we're gonna hold the volume down button on the Surface itself, not from the keyboard. And then while holding that button down, press the power button on the Surface for a couple of seconds, and then release it while keep holding the volume down key until you see some indication that the surface is not booting normally, such as the Windows logo showing for an extra long time, or you see some sort of boot prompt. And if you see the Windows logo for a while, it probably means it's loading Windows PE off of the USB instead, which is a you want. After a minute, you should see a slimmed down version of Macrium running on a slimmed down version of Windows. And if your original SSD image is located on an external hard drive, you'll want to connect that now. But in my case, it's located on an SMB share on my network. And thankfully, like I mentioned earlier, Macrium copied over my network profile and drivers for me. So I'm already connected to Wi-Fi. I just need to go into this mini file explorer application to map my network drive to a drive letter. And regardless of where your image is, our next step will be to browse to that image from within Macrium, select it, and then choose restore image. We're then going to choose our new SSD as the target, which should show up as a large, totally blank drive and then click through the remaining prompts. If you happen to see an option that says something like expand partitions to fit drive, go ahead and check that as it'll save us a step later, but we're gonna cover that late in the video, so don't worry if you don't see it. Finally, we'll click finish to start the restore process. In my case, this restore process took just under an hour, so feel free to go for a walk or enjoy a coffee while this completes. Once that's done, if you're following pathway number three, now it's time to safely eject your M.2 enclosure and circle back to the swapping out the SSDs chapter of the video to install your freshly imaged SSD into your surface. And for us on pathway number two, we can simply shut down the surface and eject our USB drive, then we'll boot up the surface and check our work. If all went according to plan, you should notice no difference from how your apps, settings, files, and everything else looked before. But one thing you might notice is that all that new extra space isn't showing up for some reason, and that's because Macrium does such a good job of cloning our partitions exactly as they were to the new drive that it actually keeps them the exact same size as they were unless we ask it to do differently. And so all we have to do now is hop in and tell our main partition to feel free to explore that new space. Really explore the studio space this time. You you got it, Bruce. I mean, really. Yeah. Explore the space. To do this, I used the free program Mini Tool Partition Wizard. 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 <laughs> and from there, I was able to simply right click my C partition, choose Extend, and from the drop down, tell it to take space from the large unallocated area, drag the slider all the way to the right to use all of it, and then choose OK. And this process only took a few seconds, which was lovely. After that, you can close Partition Wizard and head over to the This PC view of your File Explorer to see that you now have way more space than you had before on your Surface, so you can load it up with many more games, programs, and SNL reruns. I got a fever, and the only prescription it's more cowbell. Aside from having much more storage space, let's take a look and see if our read-write speeds of this SSD are about the same, better, or hopefully not, but worse. Unfortunately, I forgot to clock my SSD before swapping in the new SSD, but thankfully I was able to find these metrics from my same Surface model from fellow YouTuber EJU, and according to his numbers, it looks like my Surface jumped from about 2100 megabytes a second read speed and 860 megabytes a second write speed to a whopping 4780 megabyte per second read speed and 4158 megabyte write speed, which is absolutely crazy. Now it's very possible that when he clocked his Surface SSD, he might have been using different numbers from Crystal Dismark, and so to avoid having arbitrarily inflated numbers, I also clocked my MacBook Pro's SSD, which is an M2 MacBook Pro, to get a more direct comparison of the numbers. And boy am I glad I did because, as you can see, the upgraded Surface SSD absolutely blows the MacBook SSD out of the water by nearly all counts, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with my purchase. Apple sure charges a lot for a pretty mid SSD. Do I sound young or really old when I say mid? Now, if you decide to perform this upgrade, let me know in the comments how it goes, and if you notice any steps that were slightly different or out of sorts, I'd love to know, and I'll add notes to the description as we go to make sure all of our friends are helped out. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, tip out the channel, and we'll see you next week.